think the biggest mistake many of you made was after watching? Yes. Preparation. <laughs> yeah. I, I think some of you did preparation, but <clears throat> when you're talking to a stranger in an elevator, what's the first thing you want to do? Build rapport. Even before you build rapport. What? I'm not even sure your name is not always the best lead. Ask what their name is. What exactly? Ask how they're doing. If I ask how they're doing, when they've asked me what do I do for a living, <laughs> that's probably not going to go. Ask what they do. Ask what they do. You know, if, if, if somebody says, what do you do? And you say, well, what do you do? <laughs> You're in an elevator. You, you, you only have a few seconds here. You, you, what's the first thing you want to do? Um, maybe give an example of a problem that uh, your uh, company or what you do could help solve. So I covered this. <laughs> yeah, but see, here's the thing. When, when somebody says, what do you do? And you say, I'm an insurance salesperson, or I'm a makeup artist, or I'm a cook, or I'm a realtor, or anything, instantly that person has all these predetermined ideas of what that is. And that actually shuts down their brain. So the number one thing you want to do when you're doing an elevator pitch is generate curiosity. You've got to leave with a hook that's surprising, that's different, that's, that's going to get my attention. So you should actually never, ever lead with what you do directly. So you want to gab, grab people's attention? Yes. Like the way I ask the question to you. I, I thought you you ask a question was very good. It was one of the better lead-ins, and you got my curiosity. And then, what did you do? I was like, you became a salesperson. Okay. Yeah. You. I guess. You instantly started talking about the features and benefits. So the first thing you want to do is grab people's attention with something that's intriguing. And some of you had such great things that you could talk about. So, I mean, <clears throat> why do people buy Ferraris? Status. What? Status. Status, partly. Interest in the car. So think about if you were in an elevator and somebody said there was a Ferrari salesperson, what could they have led with that would have just grabbed your attention or made you curious? You want to be fast? What? Do you want to be fast? Do you want to be fast? And so <clears throat> I have a question. Do most of the people that buy Ferraris is that the reason they buy them? To be fast? Yeah. Yeah. Ferraris aren't even that fast. <laughs> is it more just because of like how exclusive it is to own a Ferrari? So think about how to how to make a statement of that. So driving a Ferrari is an experience. So think about how would how could you say something that will intrigue, and, and I don't want you to limit yourself to. You want to think, I'm in a in an elevator with a potential stranger. I don't know anything about them. How can I intrigue the vast majority of people that I'm going to be in this elevator with? Can I help you experience a once in a lifetime experience? So. When, 
when you say, can I help you deliver a once in a lifetime experience, but you're on the right track. So when you say, can I help you, instantly there's that sales. But if you just say, I deliver amazing lifetime experience, a, a driving lifetime experience or something like that, this, oh, I wonder what that is. Where it's going to make people either ask a question or just be intrigued, you're going to be much better off. So, whoever was the cook, sort of, I'm a cook, but your follow up right after that was much better. It's like you create unique food experiences. You know, it's like to me, that's what you should lead with. It's like, now, what do you do? I create amazing food experiences, things that just get people's attention. Those are always going to be a lot better. So most of you just didn't grab people's attention at the start. Um, some of you got some things in there that were good, emotional. Now, the insurance story I thought was interesting that sort of got a, a hook of, oh, there's something I'm doing here that's not ordinary. And those types of things are always going to get you a lot more attention and impact. Um, most of you made good eye contact, were easy to understand, spoke fairly, you know, strong enough that everybody could hear you, which is definitely a good thing. Now you just need to think, how do I make that impactful? How do I really grab people's attention? So, you know, everybody did reasonably well. A lot of C's in there. So, again, just like the last one, I'll give you an opportunity to record a little video if you leave them a hook, and then some of you, when you got to asking for contact information, your whole body changed, like you were afraid to ask. So don't be afraid to ask, and when you say, can we exchange contact information, is that strong? It's like, you know, ask for something specific. Can I get your email address? Can I get your phone number? Now, some of you did have some interesting offers that, you know, I, I thought the offer for digitizing a free logo was really good because you're going to get more people to do if you make that offer of, oh, there's some benefit of this, some, you know, or the person that does the dancing. If you had a little video online, this is that you could say, and by the way, if you'd like to see how I teach, I have a great little video I'd like to send you. What's your email address? Things like that will get you a lot further where people feel, oh yeah, I want that. And it's thinking about the end benefit of what you do. So, if I have my makeup done, what's the end result of that? What? So, would it be better to lead with, what do you do for a living? I help people feel extraordinarily confident. I wonder how they do that. Oh. Well, I do it through incredible makeup. Things like that that are going to be a little bit more curiosity generating. Any other questions about that? Yes? Like in your personal experience, how often do you have to kind of uh change your elevator pitch depending on who you're talking to? Or can you kind of have one umbrella one that works? I found that you have one umbrella one that you want to have work in almost every situation. 
assume in social settings you're going to know very little about the other person. And so it needs to have what I call a universal appeal. When we start thinking, I need different elevator pitches, we'll never master one. We'll never get really good at just feeling good at, at delivering it. And if we're in a sales situation where we know something about the client, that's not where an elevator pitch is going to be. So think about it this way. This is more of a icebreaker designed to intrigue people so that you can gather, gather information about them. Now, one of the things I found is that not everybody is going to be your client. But if you gather their information and you follow up with something intriguing, they may not be the person that's going to buy that. And for those of you that have very specialized services, um, realize that the majority of people you meet are probably not going to be prospects, but those people will probably know people that are going to be your prospects. So you need to be able to follow up and send them something that will intrigue them. And now you're going to build this network. And this is one of the, the most important things to do. Why do, you, why do you want to go through all the effort to gather people's contact information? You want to open up your network to open up to their network? Because if you build a big network, it's amazing the possibility and opportunities you will find. I mean, all of you should be building a network now that you're in college. Yes? I was going to ask, in like the follow-up to maybe a prospect that isn't someone that is actually more or qualified for you, would you want to send out something that's more direct marketing or more branding based? And it depends a little bit on what you're selling, but you want to really be, instead of thinking about it as direct marketing or branding, think about it as relationship building. How do I make a connection with this person so that they're going to remember me in a, in a unique way so that if they ever meet somebody that needs me, Help. I can follow up with So when I got my MBA at UCI, help. I was running an advertising agency, and I assumed that everybody in there at some point in time would probably need my services. And I systematically gathered everybody's contact information. And I found out about their spouses, their kids, and put that all in my database. And that was, I graduated in 2005, and I have sent out an email probably once a quarter to just my graduating class from UCI. Today, anytime anybody in that class wants to get a hold of anybody, they contact me because I'm the only one that stayed in touch with them. And I do know where everybody in the class is. And I've ended up selling a number of houses to people. I've also referred a number of people to realtors around the globe. Um, made pretty decent referral fees from that. So it's, it's just amazing what you can build if you stay in touch with people. The only regret I have is that when I went to Cal State Fullerton, I didn't build a network of people that I went to school with. If I had to do it again, every person in every class, I would get their contact information. Because you guys are going to go out and do amazing things. And some of you are going to really be amazing. And anybody that stays in touch and follows up with them is going to have a huge opportunity. So uh, <clears throat> no. don't let the opportunity slip away. Also, I did stay in touch with every one of my professors from UCI. 
And that's why I'm teaching here today, because I told them I'd be interested in teaching, and sure enough, that's where the opportunity came from. If I would not have followed up with them, I promise, you know, they wouldn't have said, oh, yeah, let me call Greg and see if he wants to teach. So build your network. That's the moral of that story. Now, the other thing is to think about what you're going to follow up with once people you get the contact information and be able to follow up with that. So any questions about anything this evening? What I said at the end is like, ask yourself, did I, did I have a hope to grab people's attention? And then did I really share the end result of what I do? Not the features yeah. and benefits, yeah. but you know, the end result <laughs> that's going to grab people's attention. And did I make an offer that made people want to give me their contact information? Mm -hmm. OK, yeah, that's where, because I, I was writing it out, and I remember I was like, how do I give this a value? But understanding, like, because that's when I was in the room, and I saw like, curiosity generated. And I was like, OK, well, that's when I kind of like, I was like, oh, I help people develop their personal brands and organizations. And then I kept writing it out. But now hearing it afterwards, I'm like, OK, where's the value of like wanting to say just and what's, what's the hook? See, yeah. and, and, and here's one of the things that I meant to say this, and I forgot to say it to the class, is that a lot of you suffered from what I call the curse of knowledge. You understand what personal branding is. To the average person, do they really understand that? So, what does personal branding do for somebody? Are you asking? Yeah. Oh, I. It's how you promote and present yourself to just anyone you're trying to outreach to. Really. But what does that do for them? Rather than promoting their image, like in a positive manner. So, so yes, promoting their image. But what's what's the benefit of personal branding? Mm, I look at it as you get your. Obviously, your message, your want, your sell across, and then also it like allows you to. I keep looking at outreach and how you develop and like you know. So what what is what is that? What is why why would you want to to outreach? Why would you want to brand yourself? To have a focus. What? To have a focus, and you know, like what's your drive and motivation. So, what's the purpose of a brand? <laughs> Uh, more than to sell yourself, more like more than that, more well, than so to sell your any your brand, product. whether it's personal or a, a company's brand. What's the purpose of that brand? To sell your value. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what what are what are businesses? What are brands trying to do? Mm, to build a connection with you. They're trying, I mean, and, and there's some of that in there, but when, when I walk in and I see the Doritos brand, it's like a lasting message in your head of what that is, like Doritos, you're like, oh, nacho, the nacho cheese. Like, well, it's, it's a oh, What is that word? So, but, so, I forgot that word. There's a word like you walk across something and it's like that first thought almost. Of it. So it's top of mind, but it's it's if I see twenty five different bags of corn chips, yeah, and I see one. Customer loyalty. Uh, customer loyalty. <laughs> but before you get the customer, those are end after way down thing. After you. The the first thing a brand is really trying to do is differentiate you from other <laughs> competition. <laughs> It's, it's, it's one of yeah. those sort of core things. So, you know, to me it's like when you say, I do personal brands, it's like, think about it. I help people stand out from the crowd. Mm, okay. That's, that's going to get a lot more people's attention. Oh, everybody wants to stand out. Everybody wants to be, you know, and how do you do that? And, and uh, this is one of those sort of trick questions. When people ask, what do you do? We are so conditioned to think about the job mm -hmm. instead of the result. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So for a personal brand, you're helping people stand out. Um, and think about how to how to create a little thing, and then think, you know, what can I give them that would make them want to give me my email address? So, you know, I make people really stand out in business, in companies, in a variety of things, and I have a two-minute video on how it can help you make yourself stand out. If you give, your, 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 give me your email address, I'd be happy to send it to you. I see. I see. Okay. That's going to be something that's going to be a lot more, oh, yeah. 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 And, and now you have an opportunity to now follow up, send me a little video. And the video will say all the, basically your descriptive, but you already gave them Hey, the value of the result, and you already did it all in one short package, but then your video or whatever follow-up could actually do the rest, the steps, the how to do, and all that stuff. Yeah, and so think about it. The videos, and if you think about how to shin out short little videos, think about, you know, the popularity of TikTok. Yeah, easily, yeah. Think, okay, how can I create seven TikTok videos that I can grip on people over email that Once will... A week or something, yeah build a relationship. Those things are where you're going to get a tremendous value. Yeah, 100%. Okay, I definitely see like the way to kind of formulate it. And it, I think that way was way more understanding, honestly. I really, yeah, I really think that that would kind of help a lot of people right there. Because that, that was very, very, like that made it so clear now. I don't really think I know okay. it, yeah. So it's, it's, it's thinking about how to Think what's what's this thing that I do, and what's the benefit that people are going to get from it? Mm -hmm. And that's oh, not what do I do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think last week when we someone asked me like kind of yours, and I think we all kind of like grasped, yeah, and we kind of like grasped it, and I felt like we missed that whole part though. Like we honestly like we kind of heard like more of how you did it and how you conveyed it, but we missed the entire like you know. Oh, 